Well, centralization, censorship and control seems to be the order of the day. The part Labour want to take us down. We heard earlier from Carol Roth about the dangers of digital currencies. Misinformation bills are now out there in case someone online disagrees with the government. We're talking about now this week a national digital ID system, a plan that Finance Minister Katie Gallagher said would ideally be up and running by mid next year. Not if I can help it. This could mean our licenses, medical cards, other data will be condensed on a government regulated platform which third party organisations to you can use to verify your identity. Frightening stuff. Remember what I said about the left? Under Bob Hawke, they resisted a national identity card. That was the left, the good left of the past. The modern left want to bring it in on steroids. Joining us now to discuss it, United Australia Party Senator Ralph Bavette. Ralph, great to have you here. You've been warning about this digital ID, this central bank digital currency. Spell it out for us. Look, at the end of the day, what it's... Firstly, I noticed that your glass of water haven't started boiling. Haven't started haven't boiling, started Ralph. We've been waiting still for there, global boiling. There. It's... Uh, global Rita's boiling. Even drinking her. Yeah. It can't be that. You know what I think? I think uh, these Burn guys... Your lips. Yep. Yeah, these guys at the UN, they must have a great laugh every time they say some of their garbage and, you know, people swallow it up. Absolute madness. But back to the digital currency... Uh, sorry, the uh, digital ID... Very, very dangerous. Why? Because it centralises power. It centralises power in the hands of government. Like you mentioned, all of your ID in one place. Why is that dangerous? Well, we've seen what the government has done to us during the COVID times, how authoritarian they got, how out of control they got, how much they love the power. Now we're going to say, have some more power. On top of that, we know how useless the government is at organising anything at all. Look at pink <laughs> bats. Look at uh, the uh, town halls. Uh, Snowy 2.0. <laughs> Snowy 2.0. Look at uh, the rollout of the NBN, yep. right? These guys are complete cretins. They couldn't do anything uh, with any efficiency whatsoever. So now we're just going to give them control over all of our data? I don't think so. And if the recent uh, data breaches that we've seen happen over the last few years, Optus is, is a great example. Now imagine if a hacker got into... Uh, the one sole place where all your digital information was stored. Very, very dangerous stuff. But more dangerous than that is the potential for abuse and the coming social credit system, which I've heard you talk about uh, previously, where the government uh, could potentially one day say, hey, uh, you said something on the internet that we're not happy about, and because you've said something on the internet, what we're going to do is we're going to restrict certain rights and privileges from you. Now, this is already happening in China. This is not a conspiracy theory like some people might think. And that is the real key to the digital ID. But they did that anyway. During COVID, we were locked in our homes in Melbourne. We had curfews. Mm. You had uh, people who weren't allowed into restaurants and into all sorts of venues mm. if they didn't have the, the, the pass with showing that they were vaccinated. So, I mean, is this digital ID going to be any different to what we already have? Isn't it just going to be a little bit more efficient way of... Uh, controlling the masses, because they can already control the masses. Absolutely. So it is a more efficient way to control you, everyone at this table, everyone at home. It's a more efficient way to control you. But like I mentioned before, now it gives private companies the ability to uh, grab that data and it gives private companies the ability to also control you. So let's say the government says, hey, um, Miss Panahi, uh, the other day on Twitter, you posted something that we deem inappropriate. Uh, now what's going to happen is you can't buy a flight on X airline to go international because we've deemed that what you've said is not OK. Now, this is the power of the digital ID and um, centralising all of our data in one spot. And if you think for a second that your government wouldn't do that to you, you have been smoking something <laughs> funny because your government would absolutely do that to you. Look what they did to you during the COVID pandemic. Well, think about Nigel. For all these things, there are precedents for them all, and this is the, this is the reality. You don't have to talk about conspiracy well, theories because, not, sorry, James, oh, Nigel just, Farage. We've seen that the Canadian truckers. Sorry, James. No, it's okay. I was going to say. I mean, look, I'm very much against these sorts of national IDs. I think for all the, the reasons you spell out. But what I'm curious about, though, is you know, on one level, much of this already exists. You know, if you go and apply for credit, there are services that go and check all of your IDs automatically, and it's an efficiency thing that helps the economy operate. How do you actually get to 
the point where this digital ID, that, like it's a big leap to go from, you know, there's a centralized repository of my, you know, stuff that's on my gov, for example, to suddenly I can't go and buy a bottle of vodka or I can't, you know, go uh, buy a burger or I can't buy a plane ticket. There would have to be an awful lot of steps to get us there. How does that happen, Ralph? Look, absolutely there will have to be steps to get us there. But with, with, with anything like this, what we need to understand is it doesn't happen overnight. It's incrementalism, bit by bit by bit, slowly, slowly, over many years, acclimatising the people at home, the public, to the ideas that, that, that uh, they are espousing at the moment. Now, we don't need to look very far to see examples of this. Like you mentioned, Nigel Farage, he's already been debanked because the bank deemed his views to be unacceptable. Debanked, he can't have a bank account, right? Um, if you look at China, for example, China already has a social credit system in place already, and... Um, I'm sure you've talked about it before on your show. This is what's coming for us now if we allow it to keep going. We've got to put the brakes on it right now. And the way that we do that is we make people at home aware of what's happening. We explain the situation to them. And then at the next election, you're going to have to vote differently. Labor and Liberal, we all know that we live in a duopoly. We all know that. They're both the same. But the idea for this bill came under the Morrison government. It was a Liberal Party idea, and now the Labor Party's running with it. Yeah, and that worries me. And I just, on your screen, we just showed a bit of the China um, system that had been set up. And these, James, I don't think there are many steps to go because one of the systems... I'll just show you this in China, how they now uh, have speed cameras which if you go over the speed limit, and we'll show you the footage now in a second, it automatically deducts the money from your bank account. So here you go, they've gone over the speed limit, that's the thing, up you go, and you see up there that the person who's, who's just gone over this, it automatically deducts the fine from the bank. Now you might say, well, that's already happening, but they do it instantly and automatically digitally. Don't tell the ACT police about well, that, that's well, all I've got to say. Well, this is the whole thing, <laughs> this, is, this is exactly what's happening. And, and also, I think the point Ralph is saying that... We've already seen, for example, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're being told there's too much methane at use. So the farmers could easily be told, sorry, guys, you can only buy X amount of fertiliser per... Yeah, if it's a digital currency, you just won't be able to buy any more. It'll well, be like course, a cashless credit but, card. But I guess, Ralph, the question that I have for you is, you know, we're, if with the Dr. Farage example, the thing that I am concerned about, obviously government is a huge threat, but woke corporations are already doing this exactly. to us. Absolutely, they they are doing this, and if we if we implement the digital ID in the way that that uh, we're talking about at the moment, at the government's talking about, these work corporations are going to have ever increasing levels of power over the average person at home. So what we really have right now is we have a corporatocracy. That's what we have, where the government and big corporations work hand in hand, hand in glove. That's mm -hmm. what we have at the moment in Australia, and that's what's uh, going to be expanded upon with this digital ID. Do not be fooled, people at home. The government does not care about you. They are not your friend. All they care about is more power of control for themselves and their mates in big corporations. Ralph Babette, Senator Ralph Babette from Victoria, United Australia Party. And just quickly before we go, big win for Craig Kelly, mm. um, who was taken to mm. the court case over the Australian Electoral Commission trying mm. to say that his posters had yes. the type too small on them. Absolutely. So Very, just give us 30 seconds on that. The AEC uh, came up to Craig Kelly and they said, look, on your election posters, the one that said vote one Craig Kelly for the last <laughs> yes. federal election, at the bottom of those posters it says uh, authorised by Craig Kelly. Yeah. They said that that typeface was too small and it had to be made bigger. And because it was too small, what they had tr tr tried to do was they tried to stop him from campaigning on election day. Yeah. They failed at, at that, so they took him to court again and they failed again. The AEC, not a friend of the United States. Well, he, Craig Kelly is rightly calling for the head of the AEC to be Good. fired. A um, million dollars, that has cost you, the taxpayers, because of this uh, woke oh. garbage.